Hello everyone, I hope you are doing well. First things first, next week video will be the monthly Q&A, so please post your questions related to martial arts, Xiu Dao and Chinese culture in the comment section or in the Ask Dao Yi channel on the Dao Yi Discord or email me if you prefer to be anonymous. So far, we have done 29 monthly Q&As and I continue to be impressed by the quality of the questions asked by our community members. I look forward to many more. Today will be our 13th episode in the Decoding Martial Proverbs series. There have been many martial art proverbs discussed in the past 12 episodes of this series. If you are new to this channel, I recommend watching the entire Proverbs series. Link to the playlist is in the description. <clears throat> you may find some interesting proverbs that benefit your practice. Today, I will introduce three interesting martial art proverbs that I hope you will like them. But first, let's warm up with Dao De Jin's commentary and Xiu Dao. Today's sentence is from Chapter 5 of Dao De Jing. It is, 多言数穷不如手中. In this chapter, Lao Zi continued introducing this philosophical attitude of Wu Wei or non-action by using the same method, using the Dao of Heaven or Tian Dao to introduce the Dao of Human or Ren Dao. In Chinese culture, the Dao of Heaven refers to the basic rule governing the existence and the changes of all the things between Heaven and the Earth. There have been different explanations in ancient times about the relationship between the way of Heaven and the way of Human. Lao Zi mainly promoted the concept that the way of heaven was the source or the basis of human moral conduct and orderly human relations. One should comply with the way of heaven. This concept will be discussed in later chapters of the Dao De Jing. In this chapter, Lao Zi said that even nature applies Wu Wei or non-action. He said, quote, Tian Di Bu Ren Yi Wan Wu Wei Chu Gou, Sheng Ren Bu Ren Yi Bai Xing Wei Chu Gou, end quote. Translation Heaven and Earth have no regard for benevolence. They view all creatures as straw dogs offered to God. Nor does the sage have a regard for benevolence. He likewise views common people as straw dogs. End the translation. In other words, heaven and earth have no preferences, like or dislike to the temporal world. Everything in the material world just goes according to the law of nature in the world. The sages always imitate the law of nature. Nature has no preferences or prejudice toward common people and makes them develop themselves. At the end of this chapter, Lao Zi said the two sentences that we will discuss today. Quote, 多言数穷不如手中, end quote. Translation Many words lead to failure. It is better to be restrained in translation. In other words, by many words is weight exhausted, therefore hold to the core. This is Lao Zi's further attitude toward Wu Wei. Now, let's talk about the application of these two sentences in Xiu Dao practice. 多言数穷不如手中 Duo means many, multiple. Yan means talking, speaking. Shu also means many, multiple. Chong means useless. Buru means 
Rather, Shou means focus, return to. Zhong means middle, center. Put together, it means that in Xiu Dao practice, the best method is Shou Zhong, or to focus on the middle. Since Shou Zhong is one of the key concepts in Daoism practice, different Daoist schools provide different explanations of this term, and it is the fundamental concept of the middle school or Zhong Pai, which I briefly introduced two weeks ago in the video titled Different Schools of Xiu Dao, link is in the description. Li Daochun, the founder of the middle school, emphasized the concept of Shou Zhong and took it as the core of the Xiu Dao practice. Li Daochun, the founder of the middle school of Xiu Dao, promoted Shou Zhong as the method to enter Xuan Guan or Mystery Gate. It is worth noting that the word Zhong or middle has many different meanings in Daoism, Buddhism, and Confucianism. As a result, the word Zhong or middle also has multiple meanings in Xiu Dao, especially in the middle school created by Li Daochun. For example, according to Li Daochun, the word and the concept of middle actually means emptiness or Xu in Daoism. And one of the objectives of the middle school's Xiu Dao practice is Zhong He or Middle Harmony. It is a very deep concept, and I will save it for the future. So, Lao Tzu's word Shou Zhong became the guiding principle of this famous Taoist internal elixir school, Zhong Pai, a very profound and well developed internal energy refinement system in Xiu Dao history. In practice, what you need to do is calm down the mind and focus on the lower dantian area. Pay attention to the energy breathing and with time, the great medicine or Da Yao will be generated. That is the basic practice of Shou Zhong or focus on the middle. With that, let's move on to today's main topic, decoding three martial art proverbs. They are, first, Gu Zheng Jin Rou, Qi Xue Yi Liu. Second, Nei Wu Xing Yao Dong, Wai Wu Xing Yao Sui. Third, Niu Kua He Qi, Zhua Di Lao. Let me explain them one by one. Topics covered in today's video include First proverb on structure and tendons. Second, Second proverb on internal and external five elements. Third, Third proverb on Ba Gua proverb. Fourth, Demonstration. And fifth takeaways. Topic 1 First proverb on structure and tendons. The first proverb is Gu Zheng Jin Rou, Qi Xue Yi Liu. These two sentences are from the oldest Chinese medicine document, Huang Di Nei Jing, the inner canon of the Yellow Emperor, or the Yellow Emperor's classic of medicine. <coughs> The third chapter of this book says, quote, 是故紧合五味, 柔正筋骨, 气血以流, 凑理以密, 如是则, 骨气已经, 紧到如法, 常有天命, End quote. Translation. <coughs> Therefore, one should be mindful of what one consumes to ensure proper growth, reproduction, and the development of bones tendons, ligaments, channels, and collaterals. This will help generate this smooth flow of qi and blood, enabling one to live a long life and translation. <coughs> so, the sentences of Gu Zheng Jin Rou and Qi Xue Yi Liu are two of the most important concepts from this paragraph. Gu means bones, Zheng means straight, in a good condition. Jin means tendons. Rou means flexible, soft. Qi means energy. Xue means blood. Yi means so that. Liu means 
flow without blockage. For thousands of years, this paragraph, especially these two sentences, has been used to guide the principle of Chinese medicine for health. At the same time, martial artists started using these two sentences to describe the importance of the practice of Jin Gu or tendons and bones. In any martial art practice, no matter what purpose, health or self-defense, it is essential to have strong bones along with solid body structure and flexible tendons. By the way, I have a prior video talking about the importance of Chen Jin Ba Gu, link is in the description, but in today's video, I would like to talk about the importance of Chen Jin Ba Gu in terms of its impact on the power releasing of Fa Jin movements. Now, let me translate these two sentences from a martial art perspective. Here, Gu means structure, Zheng means correct, Jin means tendons and muscles, Rou means flexible. Qi Xue together means energy and power, Yi means in order to, Liu means smoothly released. Again, the Chinese language is very interesting in that one word can mean different things according to its context. So, in martial art practice, these two sentences can be translated differently. In TCM, Terms such as bones, tendons, qi, and blood are used to explain the human body functions and pathology, but in martial art practice, it is about structure, movement, power, energy, speed, and so on. This is why in martial art practice, these two sentences can be translated to in order to release martial art smoothly without blockage, the body structure should be solid and correct, and the tendons and the muscles should be strong and flexible. Now the question becomes, how to ensure a correct body structure and flexible tendons? Let me explain. In Chinese martial art practice, especially the internal styles, we always emphasize the importance of the natural structure. The term natural structure here indicates a status that the structure is suitable for power release. Very often, in order to reach this natural state, two opposing energies should be utilized to maintain a posture, and uh, sometimes even more energies in different directions should be utilized in a certain body part. Let me give you two examples here. First, in the Tai Chi single whip stance, hands extend outward while arms maintain a sinking feeling. The head extends upward slightly while the whole body sinks downward naturally. Let me give another example. The elbow posture of the front hand in Xing Yi San Ti posture. The hand should have a forward pushing motion, and the elbow should have a downward motion, but at the same time, the upper arm and the forearm should have a twisting motion with an expanding feeling. So, over emphasizing a single direction, for example, only emphasizing the downward motion of the elbow is definitely a beginner's mistake. Also, every posture should be naturally managed, which is the fundamental concept of any Taoism based practice. Also, any forced posture in a static state is incorrect. Only if a series of posture with strength in a dynamic state serves a martial function, will it be considered a natural practice? This is an advanced concept, you may have to watch it multiple times in order to fully understand it. 
Now let's discuss tendon flexibility, which is the second part of the first sentence. Tendons in Chinese martial art can either mean both tendons and muscles or only tendons. Since this sentence does not indicate the exact meaning, let's assume that it, it only means the tendons here, since muscles should be flexible normally, leaving us with the tendons as the only concern. So, Jin Rou or flexible tendons emphasizes the result of a muscle stretching. A practitioner can execute a movement not only in a flexible manner but also with sufficient martial strength. To achieve it, a practitioner should practice the aforementioned Chen Jin Ba Gu, which I introduced in a prior video. Bear in mind that Chen Jin Ba Gu or stretch the tendon and pull the bone should be done dynamically in order to develop martial power instead of a mere stretching movement. So, what does the second sentence mean? It says the result of the correct practice of bones and tendons in the state of the natural flow of energy and the blood. Otherwise, the energy will not flow naturally without any blockage. The energy here means martial power instead of energy used in Qigong and meditation. Again, the same term has a similar meaning but should be comprehended specifically with reference to different contexts. So, the first sentence indicates the correct practice and the second sentence indicates the result of the correct practice of structure and tendons. I remember it like yesterday. In my grandfather's senior years, the first thing for him to do every morning was to work on stretching and some single movements at a different speed. Also, the last thing for him to do before going to bed was to stretch while sitting on the bed. I think this is one of the reasons he enjoyed a healthy and comfortable senior age without any advanced medical care back then. So, that was the explanation of the first proverb. Now, let's move on to the second one. Topic 2. Second proverb on internal and external five elements. The second proverb is This is an interesting proverb. First, let me translate it word by word. Nei means internal, Wu Xing means five elements, metal, water, wood, fire, and earth. Yao means will, should, dong means move, act. Y means external, Sui means follow, coordinate. Put together, it means the internal five elements should act and the external five elements should follow. Now, that brings us many questions. First, what are the internal five elements? Second, what are the external five elements? Third, what does act mean here? Finally, what does follow mean here? By the way, I have a prior video titled Internal Style Concept 49, 5 Elements, 5 Organs, 5 Forces, Wu Xing, Wu Zhang, Wu Li, in which I have explained the 5 element concept and its application in detail. Link is in the description. In today's video, I will elaborate further to explain this proverb. Nei Wu Xing and Wai Wu Xing or internal five elements and external five elements originally was a concept used in Xiu Dao practice. In Daoist culture, the internal and external five elements have different explanations. For example, Liu Yiming, the famous Daoist priest in the Qing dynasty, talked about this concept in Xiu Dao. According to him, the internal and external five elements 
are the yin and the yang energy changes of the universe. In martial art practice, this concept became popular around the end of the Ming Dynasty to the beginning of the Qing Dynasty, around less than 400 years ago. For example, the famous martial art book Shaolin Quan Pu Zha Zu, edited around the Qing Dynasty, recorded this term along with its explanation. It says that the internal five elements are the five organs and the external five elements are the five types of martial energy. Even though in this book, the author used a different word shun or smooth instead of sui or following, the meaning is still the same. However, there is no specific description of movements used to apply and execute these five types of energy. Later on, Xin Yi Liu He and Dai family Xin Yi, the style studied by Li Luoneng, the founder of Xing Yi, also used the same concept as described in the Shaolin Quan Pu Zha Zu. Speaking from research, the internal and external five elements, or the five organs and the five types of martial energy, was the popular martial art theory back then. Li Luoneng, the founder of Xing Yi, was the first to create the five elements fist to specifically practice the five type of martial energy described in the documents of Xin Yi Liu He and Dai family Xin Yi styles. In other words, Li Luoneng was the first person to take it beyond mere theory and apply a specific martial practice to cultivate the five type of energy. This is a further development as well as one of Li Luoneng's many noteworthy contributions to the internal style martial art community. Going forward, whenever you come across these two sentences again, you will know that all of the other materials used them as a guiding principle to describe the inner relationship between organs and the physical body parts, but it was Li Luoneng who developed the theory into an actual practice, which is the five elements feast of Xing Yi. That was the historical information of this proverb. Now, let's talk further about the meaning of this proverb. As I just mentioned, Li Luoneng applied the internal and external five elements with specific five elements fist in practice, transforming a theory into a physical movement to reflect said theory. So, I'd like to explain this proverb based on Xing Yi's five element practice and answer the aforementioned four questions. First, what are the internal five elements? Internal five elements are the five organs. This concept is based on TCM and each of the five organs bears relationships not with each other but also with other body parts such as the livers with eyes, uh, kidney with ears, lungs with the nose, and so on, which are some very basic TCM concepts. Internal organs control the function of the human body and other aspects such as emotions. Second, what are the external five elements? External five elements are the five elements fist of Xing Yi. Li Luoneng created the five element fist practice in order to make the original external five elements practicable. In Xing Yi practice, the five elements are the five basic movements that represent five types of martial powers. Third, what does act mean here? It means that by applying the five powers related to the five organs, the body leads the movement of the external five elements fist. In other words, 
the body leads the arm and the leg movements. Or the Shen Fa or body method is the lead factor in limbs movements. 4. What does follow means here? Follow means that limb movement should be controlled by the body, especially in the power releasing movement. The power of the limbs should be handled by the body. Those four questions and the four answers should clarify the proverb Nei wu xing yao dong, wai wu xing yao sui. It is also worth noting that to fully understand these two sentences, we should not take them at face value. This proverb only explains the basic relationship between the body and the five element fist, but in practice, it should be analyzed specifically, meaning that there are many variations of each element and one should not be confused in applying them. Topic 3 Third Proverb on Ba Gua Footwork The third proverb is Niu Kua He Qi Zhua Di Lao. This is actually the second half of the first proverb recorded by Quan Kai Ting based on the teaching of his teacher. Dong Haichuan, the main disseminator of the Bagua system in Beijing. The first half of the proverb talks about the upper body requirement, including the chest, head, and the back. I have a prior video titled Decoding Martial Proverbs 5, in which I have introduced the first part of this whole proverb in detail. Link is in the description. Today I will explain the second part of this proverb, Niu Kua He Xi Zhua Di Lao. This proverb contains three requirements of the Ba Gua stepping practice. I have to point out that this proverb assumes that the practitioner is working on the typical Ba Gua posture. The Qing Long Tan Zhua or the Black Dragon extends the claw movement. This proverb can be divided into three parts for easier understanding. First, the first two words, Niu Kua. Second, the next two words, He Xi. Third, the last three words, Zhua Di Lao. So, in total, there are seven words in this proverb. Let me explain them one by one. The first term, Niu Kua. Niu means turning, Kua means hips. It is worth noting that in the old Chinese language, hip included the hip as defined in modern times along with the waist. So the word hip or Kua can actually mean the entire hip and the waist area on each side. So in Bagua walking, these two words tell us that the practitioner should turn the body toward the center of the circle. As mentioned earlier, when keeping the Qinglong Tan Zhua posture, the upper body should turn toward the center of the circle in order to apply the Ba Gua fighting strategy. The second term, He Xi, He means close or moving together, Xi means knees. These two words express the requirement for the Kou Bu stepping posture. In Bagua circle walking practice, basically there are two types of foot patterns, Kou Bu and Bai Bu. Kou Bu means one foot steps toward the other foot, usually to step inward. The Bai Bu means that one foot steps outward, so in Bagua walking, Kou Bu and Bai Bu are used for changing directions along the circle. He Xi actually describes the Kou Bu posture, like this photo. In this posture, the knee should move toward each other in order to generate martial power naturally. Finally, the third term, Zhua Di Lao. Zhua means grasp. Di means ground, Lao means steady. Put together, it means that 
one stepping, the feet should grab the ground steadily in order to have a strong martial posture. This term tells us that in Bagua stepping practice, usually a practitioner uses a stepping instead of twisting the foot to change the circle walking direction. This method will make the Bagua power generation much easier and more powerful. Very often, when people change direction in circle walking, they twist their feet instead of using a stepping method or kobu and baibu. There are only a few places where foot twisting motions are allowed, but the stepping method is almost always the right method to use for changing directions. So, combined with the first half of the proverb introduced in the prior video, number 5 in the Proverbs series, both work together as requirements of the upper and the lower body practice. Both of them are equally important in Bagua practice. I'd like to share a personal experience with you. When I check a student's Bagua practice, I always pay close attention to their stepping method. If I notice him using a twisting motion instead of stepping, I immediately correct him to ensure the habit doesn't continue going forward. In other words, I just follow Dong Hai Chuan's proverb to evaluate a student's stepping. Also, no matter how fast or how slow the stepping is, every single step should be clear. In Chinese, we call it Gan Jing, a term used to describe being neat and clean. Topic 4 Demonstration I'd like to show you a de video shot exactly 3 years ago. It is the freestyle stepping exercise that I practice very often. Pay attention to the stepping. Topic 5 Takeaways I introduced three very useful martial proverbs in today's video. First the proverb on structure and attendance. It is Gu Zheng Jin Rou, Qi Xue Yi Liu. In order to release martial power smoothly without blockage, the body structure should be solid and correct, and the tendons and the muscles should be strong and flexible. Second proverb on internal and external five elements. It is Nei Wu Xing Yao Dong, Wai Wu Xing Yao Sui. The internal five elements should lead the movements, while the external five elements should follow and coordinate to the internal one. Third proverb on Bagua footwork. It is Niu Kua He Qi Zhua Di Lao. The hip turns toward the center of the Bagua circle. The stepping method instead of foot twisting is the right way to change directions in Bagua walking. That's the end of today's video. Quick reminder, next week's video will be the monthly Q&A, so I'm looking forward to your questions. Thanks for watching, see you next time, and enjoy your practice.